Great. Thanks a lot, Dr. Ling. It's uh, really an honor to be invited to speak on this topic uh, here to you all. Um, and so, you know, I w wanted to um, uh, talk about radiation and the level of evidence that has come out in the last 10 or 15 years, supporting the use of radiation, not only radio surgery, but also whole brain radiation and how that technique has evolved with time. Um, uh, and it's, this is a, a, a theme that uh, has been echoed by Dr. Ling and Dr. Ferguson. There have been uh, significant advances in systemic therapy, uh, which render our population of brain metastases patients different than the population of brain metastases patients that were treated in uh, prior eras. Uh, and so uh, our focus has evolved and um, uh, we now are interested in strategies which limit toxicity while at the same time providing durable intracranial control. Um, and so many of the recent uh, prospective uh, clinical trials now use cognitive preservation as a primary endpoint. So I'll highlight that as we uh, go through some recent data. So let's first start talking about the role of whole brain radiation and how it's evolved, how, um, how, how whole brain radiation is supported with level one uh, evidence uh, at this time. So clearly whole brain radiation is widely available. It's well tolerated. It can be started quickly. It is very effective in treating um, uh, uh, microscopic disease, um, but there are uh, uh, established side effects, including the concern for late toxicities, including neurocognitive toxicity, limited efficacy in radio-resistant disease, and then the time off of chemotherapy that's required. So what can we do to minimize the cognitive decline following whole brain radiation? And then two uh, strategies that uh, have been tested uh, in the, the cooperative group environment. The first is memantine, and the second is hippocampal sparing whole brain radiotherapy. And so I'm gonna talk about these two uh, strategies now. So in RTOG 0614, a cooperative group trial performed in the United States, it was a phase three randomized study looking at the role of memantine in patients receiving whole brain radiotherapy. Uh, these patients were randomized to a placebo or memantine, uh, and the primary endpoint uh, was neurocognitive preservation as measured by the HBLTR score at six months. This uh, study was led by Dr. Paul Brown. And they found that the, neuro the cognitive function failure rate was reduced with the addition of memantine. Um, and uh, uh, there was a lower probability of cognitive cognitive function failure at uh, 24 weeks. Um, and it was very, very well tolerated. So this uh, became a standard of care uh, for patients under uh, receiving whole brain radiotherapy. Now in parallel, uh, uh, the development uh, or the advancement of radiation techniques, including intensity modulated radiation has opened some possibilities about uh, regarding dose shaping within the brain. And preclinical evidence has uh, have suggested that perhaps there may be some clinical benefit to avoiding the radiosensitive um, uh, stem cells uh, near the hippocampus. Um, and, and, and so uh, investigators led by Dr. Vinay Gandhi uh, helped develop the rationale for sparing the hippocampus when performing whole brain radiotherapy. This led eventually to the development of the NRG Cooperative Group Trial CC001, which is now published, uh, looking at the standard of care arm memantine with conventional whole brain radiotherapy and comparing that with memantine uh, with hippocampal avoidance whole brain radiotherapy in patients with brain metastases. Here's the schema for the trial. Patients with brain metastases uh, were stratified by RPA and prior therapy and then randomized as I described. Uh, it's important to know the eligibility criteria on this trial. Uh, uh, patients were only eligible if the brain muts for five millimeters outside the hippocampi. Uh, they must have had an MRI scan and there could not have been any evidence or suggestion of LMD. The primary endpoint again, time to neurocognitive failure. For the radiation oncologists in the audience, the, uh, the CT was defined as the whole brain uh, and the ultimate target was uh, that structure minus a hippocampal uh, uh, PRV of five millimeters. And that was uh, treated to 30 grain, 10 fractions. The hippocampi were then limited to a fraction of that dose. Uh, 
schematically, or it looks like, uh, uh, illustratively, it looks like this. So on the bottom, we see the standard whole brain radiation with a uh, uh, uniform uh, dose across the entire brain to address both gross and microscopic disease. On the top, we see the hippocampal avoidance technique uh, by which uh, bilateral hippocampi are fared uh, from the prescription radiation dose. And they found that uh, hippocampal avoidance reduced the risk of neurocognitive failure. The curves separate at about three to four months and maintain uh, uh, their separation uh, long term. So for patients without limited brain metastases, hippocampal avoidance with memantine is a favored strategy over standard whole radiation uh, for neurocognitive preservation. Um, but please keep in mind, this is particularly relevant for patients with intermediate uh, to favorable prognosis, at least four months, um, no evidence of leptomeningeal disease and no metastases within five millimeters of the hippocampus. Now let's shift, shift our attention to uh, the patients with limited brain metastases. Is there a role for whole brain radiotherapy in this patient population? This has been well evaluated uh, in, in, in multiple uh, large phase three clinical trials. Um, uh, there have been four uh, trials in patients with one to three brain metastases evaluating whether the uh, addition of whole brain radiotherapy to SRS is indicated for patients with limited brain metastases. Um, uh, in summary, uh, the addition of whole brain radiotherapy does improve local control of gross metastatic disease uh, in the brain. It does improve distant brain control. Um, uh, and, uh, but, but despite that, despite the improved intracranial control, patients consistently demonstrate impaired neurocognitive function long-term. And the addition of whole brain radiotherapy does not affect overall survival. So the first study published in uh, 2010 from EORTC uh, looked at uh, 350 patients that received local therapy for limited brain metastases and then uh, were randomized to the addition of whole brain radiotherapy or not. Um, and again, whole brain radiation uh, added better intracranial control um, and, and did lower the risk of neurologic death. But, but in subsequent studies, including uh, the Aoyama trial from Japan, uh, there was no impact of whole brain radiotherapy on uh, uh, local control, distant brain control, overall survival. Um, and this led eventually to uh, the modern evaluation of these, uh, of these patients with limited brain metastases uh, in two trials. The first was the single institution randomized control trial led by Eric Chang at MD Anderson, uh, in which patients with SRO randomized to whole brain radiotherapy uh, uh, or no whole brain radiotherapy receiving a dose of 30 gray in 12 fractions. Um, this is one of the first uh, randomized trials to incorporate a validated uh, set of neurocognitive uh, testing um, and use that as the primary endpoint. The trial was closed early by the Data Monitoring Safety Board. And uh, because whole brain radiotherapy was associated with significantly worse cognition at four months. Um, at the same time, the uh, Alliance ran, a group ran a uh, multi-institutional um, uh, clinical trial, uh, which I'm gonna get into more detail in the following slides. So in the Alliance trial, N0574 led by Paul Brown, patients with limited brain metastases, one to three brain nuts, were randomized to SRS alone or SRS with whole brain radiation to a dose of 30 gray in 12 fractions. Um, the SRS was delivered as shown uh, at the bottom of the slide where there was a slight reduction in dose if they are randomized to the Comption arm. The primary objective was uh, neurocognitive uh, uh, preservation at three months Uh, patients uh, with no, uh, one to three brain mets were uh, enrolled. Uh, there was no prior surgery, uh, obviously no LMD uh, on the trial. 34 institutions participated and patients were enrolled over a 10-year period. The median follow-up was seven months and the primary endpoint was met. Uh, cognitive progression at three months was worse in patients that received brain radiotherapy, uh, despite the fact that the whole brain radiation dose was relatively low, 30 gray in 12 fractions. Um, and this finding was persistent at six months. And now it's important to highlight that the primary endpoint was powered as uh, a drop of one standard deviation in any one cognitive test, uh, 
but this wasn't lim this finding wasn't limited to one cognitive test. Uh, as as uh, the uh, authors demonstrated, the decrease in neurocognitive function was across do multiple uh, domains, um, uh, as demonstrated here. No surprise, the addition of whole brain radiation improved intracranial control. Um, uh, but despite that finding, neurocognitive preservation was worse in the combination arm. There were other radiation side effects uh, noted with the addition of whole brain radiotherapy that we're all aware of, alopecia and dermatitis. Um, the necrosis rate was not significantly different between the two arms. Quality of life was followed in the study, and quality of life was improved in patients that received SRS alone relative to the combination therapy. And again, this is across multiple QOL domains. So the authors concluded that the addition of whole brain radiation is associated with a more frequent decline in cognitive function across multiple domains um, and also worse quality of life. Uh, uh, and uh, the uh, improved intracranial control was noted with the addition of whole brain radiation, but did not impact uh, overall survival. So let's shift our attention now to patients that don't have limited uh, intracranial disease, the population of patients that um, have four or more brain metastases. The standard of care, according to most historic guidelines, is whole brain radiation for patients that have um, uh, uh, at least uh, four brain mets. But evidence uh, started to emerge um, uh, during that perhaps we shouldn't treat those patients with um, whole brain radiation non-discriminatorily uh, because uh, their prognosis may not be that worse than those patients with limited brain mets. So, the, uh, the, uh, so Yamamoto et al. Um, published their experience uh, of treating 1,200 patients with up to 10 brain metastases with SRS alone and compared the outcomes of those that had two to four brain meds with those that had five to 10 brain meds. And they found that there was no difference in their overall survival and no difference in their MMSE long-term. Uh, and so they suggested that SRS might be a suitable alter alternative to patients with up to 10 brain metastases. This led ultimately to the development of a single institutional randomized control trial uh, uh, led by Dr. Lee at MD Anderson um, in which we uh, enrolled patients with four to 15 brain metastases to SRS alone versus whole brain radiation alone. This is a trial that uh, actually first started as uh, a study looking at four to 10 brain metastases, but ultimately that was expanded. These were for non-melanoma brain metastases patients. Um, uh, and they all had a, a reasonable performance status, no prior whole brain radiation. They could have received prior SRS to one to three uh, brain mets. Um, and uh, uh, the patients were randomized to SRS alone, one to one with whole brain radiation with memantine strongly encouraged after the RTOD trial was published in 2013. Um, the primary endpoints, there were co-primary endpoints, memory function at four months, as well as local control at four months. The median number of uh, METs uh, for patients enrolled on this trial was eight, so please keep that in mind. Um, and what the authors found, and this was presented at ASTRO in 2020, the manuscript is still pending publication, but what the authors found was that the uh, uh, SRS alone was associated with um, improved neurocognitive preservation at one month and six months. Now, the trial was closed early because of uh, slow accrual and then ultimately uh, uh, subsequent to the publication of CC001, um, the hippocampal avoidance study. Um, but despite the fact that the study was closed early with 18 enrolled in the SRS arm and 13 enrolled in the whole brain arm, there still was a discernible difference in neurocognitive outcome. And this was across domains. Uh, a global cognitive function measure was used called the clinical trial battery composite score, which looked at the mean Z score across multiple domains and measured the change from baseline. Um, uh, and uh, cognitive composite scores were noted in the SRS alone 
arm at one, four, and six months. Again, despite the fact that the trial was closed early with limited numbers in each group. Other endpoints that were um, uh, looked at, local control of four months was no different. Distant brain control was actually not statistically different, but numerically you can see that um, the whole brain arm had better distant brain control. There was a, a shorter time to systemic therapy with the strategy of undergoing SRS versus whole brain radiotherapy, and it was well tolerated. So again, SRS was associated with a reduced risk of neurocognitive deterioration complaint to whole brain radiation in patients with four to 15 brain metastases um, as demonstrated by advanced validated neurocognitive testing. Uh, and there was no difference in overall survival. So now let's shift gears again and talk about the role of whole brain radiation after surgery. As Dr. Ferguson highlighted, uh, the Patchell study uh, looked at 95 patients uh, with a documented resection of a single MET, uh, uh, and they received either whole brain radiation or observation. The primary endpoint was recurrence of brain disease. Um, and uh, what they demonstrated was the addition of radiation following a surgery um, improved local control at the surgical site, as well as distant control in the rest of the brain. Um, uh, and I'll get back to that in a little bit. Let's talk more specifically then about uh, the addition of a whole brain or surgery to whole brain radiation. Again, the addition uh, for a single brain met, the addition of an aggressive local therapy um, did uh, uh, improve uh, local control and, and even overall survival in this patient population. So how do we best manage the surgical cavity after a surgical resection? There's two studies I wanna highlight uh, with my remaining time. Um, the first is the uh, MD Anderson trial uh, co-led by radiation oncology and neurosurgery in patients with limited metastatic disease in which patients after a gross uh, total resection were randomized to SRS versus observation. Uh, and then the uh, uh, NCCTG study led by Paul Brown with patients with limited brain mets randomized to SRS versus whole brain radiation. Um, in the interest of time, um, I, I will just highlight that the doses were slightly different on the two trials, given the fact that the MD Anderson trial uh, were, were looking specifically at patients that had a gross total resection um, as validated by the study radiologist, the doses were reduced on the study. And so uh, this is the MD Anderson data uh, showing that um, the addition of SRS uh, to surgical resection improved local control at surgical site uh, significantly. Although I should uh, point out that the 12 month local control of 72% was a little bit lower than what we had expected. And that may have been due to the down dosing. There was a, uh, an interesting finding of an increased uh, higher than expected risk of LMD. Um, uh, and, 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 and this has led to the, the development of an ongoing clinical trial looking at pre-op versus post-op SRS. Finally, I'd like to talk about the uh, Alliance trial, the N107C. Again, patients were randomized to whole brain radiation versus SRS following a surgical resection at the neurocognitive primary endpoint. And again, the addition of um, whole brain radiation uh, uh, led to uh, uh, worsening cognitive preservation, okay? So, um, so the standard of care for patients undergoing um, uh, surgical resection um, uh, can, uh, can be SRS alone. Um, uh, there's no difference in overall survival with the addition of whole brain radiotherapy. And in the interest of time, I'm just gonna skip ahead. Um, SRS was associated with less radiation related adverse events. So. Uh, there's no difference in survival between uh, whole brain radiotherapy and SRS to the surgical cavity, but whole brain radiotherapy does introduce a, a worse cognitive outcome. Okay, so in summary, um, what I'd like to point out is that uh, as we move from observation to SRS to whole brain radiotherapy, local control can improve, but the trade-off is uh, worsening neurocognitive function. Um, and there's no improvement in overall survival uh, with more comprehensive treatment to the brain with whole brain radiation. 
So competing risks of intracranial progression and, potent, and the potential uh, late effects of whole brain radiation make patient selection particularly important. Um, uh, an outstanding question is whether hippocampal avoidance whole brain radiation with lamantine is a better strategy than SRS alone for patients with uh, uh, poor brain metastases. This question is currently being um, uh, asked in an ongoing cooperative group trial uh, uh, led by multiple uh, cooperative groups. So our practice is to uh, uh, treat patients with SRS, um, particularly if they have extended uh, uh, prognosis. Um, we don't limit to just one to three brain metastases and select patients will extend that beyond um, three brain metastases. Uh, if we are gonna use whole brain radiation, we do favor memantine with hippocampal uh, avoidance. Um, so again, thank you very much for the opportunity to today. Um, and uh, Fred, I'll hand it back to you.